I welcome you all for the weekly CCR, round, uh, weekly round of CCR. Uh, first of all, I briefly want to introduce what is PMR. The physical medicine and layer for PMR, also known as physiatry, is a medical specialty that involves restoring function of, for a person who has been disabled as a result of disease, disorder or injury. The physiatry provides integrated multidisciplinary care aimed at recovery of the whole person by addressing the individual physical, emotional, medical, vocational and social needs. A doctor who is specialized in physical medicine rehab is called as a physiatrist. Uh, second is rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is the process of helping a person achieve the highest level of function, independence and quality of life possible. Rehab does not restore, uh, reverse or undo the damage caused by uh, disease or injury, but rather help restore the person to optimum health functioning and well-being. Uh, rehabilitation means to make able. Uh, services offered by Department of PMR is cerebral palsy clinic, a pain management clinic, neuro rehab clinic like stroke, spinal injury and spasticity rehab, onco rehab services and sports injury clinic. Uh, PMR OPD uh, uh, in PMR OPD patients with various ailments like neurological musculoskeletal and traumatic disorder uh, generally visits. Main referral branches are pediatrics, neurology, medicine, oncology, and orthopedics. And this is brief layout of uh, our department, physical medicine rehab. And the uh, main facilities available are intervention pain clinic, Botox clinic, gait lab, and posture assessment lab. We have a shock wave therapy unit, unbearing harness system, thera, thera, passive activity mobility trainer, advanced physiotherapy, advanced occupational therapy facilities are available. This is one of the IPL players that uh, recently visited our department and undergoed under uh, gate assessment. Here is uh, a third idea, is uh, playing for uh, Kings 11 Punjab. Uh, this is our team comprising of uh, Professor using his uh, professor and head uh, of our department, uh, Dr. Sonu Singh B and uh, Dr. Man Singh, he is an uh, assistant professor. Now, I will start, uh, ask uh, Dr. Pawan to start the proceeding. Okay, please present. Thank you. We have MD PMR. So, we have two sets of MD PMR. Yes. Very important. Yes. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Pawan Sharma, second year junior resident uh, from Department of PMR. Uh, I am here to discuss the case of six month old male child who was brought to our OPD with complaints of neck rotated to right side since birth. I gaze more towards right side, does not smile, not interested in surroundings. Due consent has been taken from parents to discuss the case and use the pictures. As per the mother, baby keeps his neck rotated continuously to right side. Turning to left is associated with excessive cry and tightness. No history of any preceding event. Mother first noticed at the age of one and a half months. I gaze more towards right side, not looking to left on giving various stimulations like bright colors, toys, sound producing objects. Mother tries to play with child but he doesn't smile or seems interested. There were significant findings on taking the past history for which uh, Dr. Bhanupriya Sharma, third year junior resident from Department of Pediatrics would take the case ahead. Thank you Dr. Pawan for inviting me. Good morning everyone. I will discuss in brief about the NICU stay of the baby. So a term baby born to a primary mother via vaginal delivery with birth weight of 2.43 kg was referred to Mahatma Gandhi Hospital Jaipur at hour of life 2. We received the baby in emergency room on back and mask ventilation. Baby did not cry after birth for which he required resuscitation in the form of positive pressure ventilation. Abgar score were 3 and 4. On examination, the baby was in state of encyclopathy. Baby was lethargic, hypotonic, with no spontaneous respiratory efforts. Primitive reflexes, suck and moro, were absent. Pupils were constricted. Baby had one episode of multifocal seizure in the emergency room, which was managed by giving anticonvulsant. Vitals were showing bradycardia. Axillary temperature of the baby was 35.5 degrees Celsius. Other parameters were normal. Uh, so the baby was shifted to the NICU and int was intubated and shifted to the NICU and mechanical ventilation was started. EBG at admission showed pH of 6.9 uh, with PCO2 of 50, PO2 of 50 and bicarb of 15 which is suggestive of severe mixed metabolic and respiratory acidosis. 
So as per the Sarnath and Sarnath staging for neonatal encephalopathy, the baby was in moderate stage of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So earlier in hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, we used to give just supportive treatment in the form of ventilation, ionotropic support, glucose and electrolyte management and fluid management. But now we have a proper neuroprotective strategy which really protects the brain in the form of therapeutic hypothermia. So in therapeutic hypothermia, we use a cooling cap or a whole body cooling device and the baby's core body temperature is lower to a 33.5 degree Celsius over a period of 72 hours. The core body temperature is measured by a rectal throb. This as the body temperature decreases, it also decreases the metabolic rate of the body which allows cells to recover and it helps in preventing the further spread and further brain damage. So there is a proper selection criteria uh, for the of unit for therapeutic hypothermia. It has four essential parameters. It should be done in term babies who are weighing more than 2 kgs and it should be started within 6 hours of birth. So in our case, it's an outbound baby who was weighing more than 2 kgs and baby reached to us within 6 hours of life. Baby had history of delayed cry and we, this baby required positive pressure ventilation for more than 5 minutes and was also showing the signs of encephalopathy as baby was hypo, hypotonic, was having seizures. So this baby was fulfilling the criteria for therapeutic hypothermia. So baby was put on therapeutic hypothermia. Uh, for therapeutic hypothermia, though many costly instruments are available, but we have a Mira Cradle device in our institute which is an affordable whole body cooling device. It is developed in India and it uses the phase change uh, material technology which is like uh, ice gel packs. So we kept the baby on therapeutic hypothermia for a period of 72 hours. And now it has become the standard of care and there are studies which suggest that it reduces the death and major neurological disabilities by one fourth. And there are 160% more chances of neurological functions. So uh, this baby was continued for therapeutic hypothermia for a period of 72 hours under strict monitoring of vitals and temperature. After the period of 72 hours, we gradually rewarmed the baby uh, at a rate of 0.5 degrees Celsius per hour over a period of 6 to 12 hours. This baby required ventilation for 16 days and the baby also had uh, neonatal seizures in the initial 48 hours of life. The baby developed cardiogenic sh shock in the first 24 hours of life, secondary to the birth asphyxia, for which he required inotropic support for 3 days. We have bedside point of care ultrasounds and we monitored the baby on that. Baby's renal function was deranged at the time of admission. Uh, gradually renal function improved by the day of life 6. Baby also developed feed intolerance and oral, uh, gradually baby established oral paladin feed by day 21 of life. Gradually breast feed were as established by day 24 of life. As soon as the baby was weaned from the ventilator and was hemodynamically stable, we started the baby with regular physiotherapy in an ICU. So after total duration of a stay of 25 days, uh, we discharged this baby. At the time of discharge, the baby was hemodynamically stable, was maintaining saturation on room air and was accepting feeds properly. Neurological examination was performed using Hammersmith neonatal neurological examination performers, which, suge which suggests abnormal. General, there were general repeated movements were present, deep tendon reflexes were brisk. So this is the Hammersmith neonatal neurological examination performer. It is a standard for neonatal neurological examination. Uh, the lateral columns, uh, the more the distal columns and the more proximal columns suggests the abnormal examination and the normal newborn should lie between the, the central three columns. So we can see in this baby the examination was abnormal. At the time of discharge, anthropometry of the baby was weight was 2.68 kg, head circumference was 34 cm and length was 51 cm. Growth parameters were plotted on the WHO growth charts and which showed the head circumference was not growing appropriately. Before discharge, the baby, uh, EEG was repeated uh, and it uh, again came out to be normal. Barra was done for hearing assessment which was normal. So the baby was discharged on anticonvulsant and routine supplements. 
the follow up plan was explained to the parents in detail that they have to follow up in two weeks post discharge for weight gain and feeding assessment our subsequent plan for this baby was to do a mri brain and vision assessment as this was a was a high risk baby we planned to serious follow up for development assessment and weight monitoring during each immunization visit importance of early intervention in the form of physiotherapy and occupational therapy was explained in detail to the parents and the baby was referred for the same things in any family member and socio economic aspects of the family patient was living in a joint family mother is graduate and housewife father is graduate and works as a teacher in private school family supportive parents motivated family income uh, 10000 per month general examination child was lying comfortable in supine position with neck rotated towards right and eye gaze moved towards right vitals were normal and there was no pallor cyanosis clubbing teres of lymphatic pathway there was a presence of plagiocephaly i would like to ask uh, if anybody can tell me what is plagiocephaly okay plagiocephaly means the head is flattened on the one side so uh, on anthropometry uh, length for age at 6 months lies near mean you can see near the green line and weight for age at 6 months lies between minus 2 standard deviation to minus 3 standard deviation Head circumference for age six months lies below minus three standard deviation, which suggests microcephaly. Systemic examination uh, was normal. So neurological examination was done with the help of Hammersmith infant neurological examination scale. It is a simple, scorable, standardized clinical neurological examination for infants between age two to twenty-four months. The, it is a key tool for early diagnosis of neurological changes. So there are total 37 items which are divided into three sections: global score, number of AC matrices, and behavioral score. So global score it includes uh, 26 neurological items which are divided into five categories: cranial nerve function, posture, movement, tone, reflexes, and reactions. So uh, each test is scored from zero to three. Maximum score is 78. Number of asymmetries has eight items. Number of asymmetries has eight items that assess the development of motor functions. Behavioral score has three items that evaluate the behavioral state. The performer provides instruction for carrying out each item and diagram to help recording. How is it filled? Was explained by Dr. Banupriya in previous slides. So at age six to nine months, global score below forty is almost always associated with severe motor impairment. that is in ability to sit independently at the age 2 year which implies non ambulatory cerebral palsy in future between 41 to 60 are associated with less severe motor impairment that is sitting but not walking at the age 2 year <coughs> scores greater than 60 are associated with ambulation at the age of 2 year so at 6 month score of our patient was 29 now the syndrome developmental screening chart it is a 51 item assessment of cognitive and motor milestone for children 0 to 3 year old by drawing a vertical line through the chart through their age items lying to left should be attained by this age if not it can be assumed to be a developmental disease we can see this uh, at the age of 6 month orange line items lying to left social smile i follow pen pencil holds head steady rolls from back to stomach uh, back to stomach turns head to sound or bell or sound or bell so all these five items were not present in our case so we can assume that there was developmental delay gross motor function measure 88 gmfm 88 it is used as gold standard to evaluate change that occurs over time in the gross motor function of children with neurological insult it explains five areas of motor ability which are known as dimensions which are lying and rolling sitting crawling and kneeling standing walking running and jumping these items are scored from 0 to 3 total score is 88 total score is calculated as the mean score of all five dimensions child is assessed on a number of gross motor activities depend uh, depending the child's age and ability used for children aged 5 months to 16 years the score of our patient at age 6 month was 5.7 we use this score how this score is used we use this score to monitor a child's development every month we can calculate the score and we can see the progress of uh, the direction of the growth of the child 
assist with goal setting and planning rehabilitation goal setting should be realistic so we define a, a set of a target goal a score that at after 3 months this uh, score should be reached as per his age his milestone or his current abilities so we can monitor that after 3 months what growth have we achieved evaluate the outcome of motor interventions and therapies what changes have occurred how much the score has changed after intervention <laughs> local examination there was no facial asymmetry auricles were aligned with outer canthus of eye normal hairline no spine or hip deformity bilateral shoulder and scapula symmetrical no palpable lump in and around neck neck range of motion there was late on uh, examining lateral rotation that was only 50 to 80 degree only towards the right normal it is 0 to 90 degree both sides lateral bending this is 15 degree towards left normally it is 0 to 45 bilaterally there was a presence of tightness of left sternocleidomastoid by bilateral palpation method tightness of right levator scapulae no other associated congenital deformity were seen this is a inclinometer it is used to measure the cervical rotations this is how cervical rotations are measured so progress of our case we have a low birth weight baby with a history of delayed cry which was diagnosed as hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy stage 2 Abnormal HNNE at the time of NICU discharge, HINE score of 29 at age 6 month of age, developmental delay, 50 degree restriction of neck rotation. So, any possibilities? Anybody would like to guess? It can be. But we have other problems. Developmental delay, we have developmental delay. In the birth trauma, there is no history of birth trauma. So, uh, we were uh, uh, expecting that the, it can be uh, following things hemivertebral deformity, Klippelfield syndrome, storage disorders, torticollis, or sequel of HIV. So, to rule out them, we proceeded with the investigations. First, uh, routine blood investigations CBC, LFT, RFT were within normal limit, thyroid profile was also within normal limit. Uh, we uh, opted, uh, we uh, advised for genetic study because uh, there was presence of microcephaly with growth retardation and developmental delay which demanded genetic study so that in future next baby they, if they want to plan next baby such kind of things don't happen. And there was a, uh, we can say there was no significant antenatal history, still there was history of uh, birth asphyxia and with no birth trauma or any other significant uh, risk. Radiological investigations, the ultrasound neck and MRI brain. So as there was history of birth asphyxia, we decided MRI brain findings uh, of which will be described by Dr. Kartike Jain, second year junior, uh, junior resident department of radio diagnosis, followed by junior resident of ophthalmology to describe their findings. As the child was not able to fixate his eyes and was disinterested in the surroundings, so vision assessment of such child must be done at the earliest as ophthalmology reference was taken. Thank you, Dr. Pavan. I'll be discussing the radiological findings. So, uh, ultrasound of the neck was done outside at the government hospital 10 days before coming to the department of PMR, uh, which suggested shortening and thickening of left sternocleidomastoid and the right levator scapulae muscles. The previous record was not available to us. An MRI of the brain was done here in our department. It revealed symmetrical areas of white matter paucity in periventricular regions of bilateral parietotemporal lobes and the occipital lobes with mild prominence of sulcal spaces. There was an ex vacuo dilatation of temporal horn of bilateral uh, lateral ventricles, likely a uh, periventricular gliosis, which is a sequelae of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So in this first, uh, these are two images. First of all, this is a uh, axial MRI, a uh, fluid suppressed uh, image. In this, we can see that there is a uh, sulcal prominence uh, there is sulcal prominence and the white matter is uh, deficient in this area. Whereas this is a normal reference image that I have attached just to compare the findings. In this next image we can see the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles, these are dilated. Th whereas this is the normal appearance of the temporal horns. In this image we can see certain hyper intensities in the uh, basal ganglia region 
in both the uh, bilateral basal ganglia region, whereas this is a normal appearance. So this uh, hyperintensity is actually suggestive of gliosis. This is a T2-weighted image in which we can see there is a hyperintensity in the periventricular region, bilateral, which is again suggestive of gliosis, whereas this is the normal appearance. In this image, we can see certain hyperintensity uh, focal spots in the occipital cortex, whereas this is the normal imaging. So it suggests some gliotic spots in the occipital cortex. An ophthalmology reference was done, for which I call upon Dr. Tanvi Marathi to discuss the findings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karthikin. Good morning, everyone. A six-month-old baby was referred to the ophthalmology OPD for assessment of visual acuity and evaluation of eye turn towards the right side. On examination, we found that the facial symmetry was normal, head turn was towards the right side, visual assessment showed no fixation, which should be normally present for this age, patient did not follow torchlight, no ocular movements were noted, no rowing eye movements were noted, the doll's eye maneuver could not be elicited, pupils of both eyes were round and regular, and direct and consensual reflex was present. The anterior segment appeared normal. The patient was re-examined after three days of cycloplasia for retinoscopy, which showed hypermetropia within normal limits for this age. Fundus of both eyes was normal. A visual evoked potential was ordered, which showed normal amplitude and normal latency. The probable diagnosis in this case is <coughs> cortical visual impairment. The patient fulfills the diagnostic criteria of CVI which are one, absence of or abnormal visual response. In this case, the baby was not responding to visual stimuli, such as turning its head toward, to look towards the bright light or responding to visual cues given by the caregiver. Two, delayed visual milestone. The baby did not reach the visual milestone for its age and showed no interest in a, when a visual stimulus was given. Three, gaze palsy and four, abnormal brain imaging. In MRI, we, it suggested a few gliotic spots in the occipital cortex. Now, I call Dr. Pawan to discuss the case further. Thank you, Dr. Karthike and uh, Dr. Tanvi. So, summary of our case. Uh, child is a low birth weight with delayed cry. Uh, diagnosis HIE stage two at the time of uh, birth. Abnormal HNNE at the time of NIC discharge. HINE score of 29 at the age of 6 months, developmental delay, 50 degree restriction of neck rotation, on MRI uh, finding uh, suggestive of sequel of HIE, USD neck finding suggestive of shortening of shortening and thickening of involved muscles and cortical visual impairment. So uh, points uh, in favor and points against of the differentials were like triple field syndrome, there was no associated findings of short neck facial asymmetry or low hairline. For storage disorders, no organomegaly was there, LFT was within normal limits. Uh, hemivertebra, there was no visible or palpable spine uh, deformation. Points are going in favor of torticollis and sequel of HIE. For torticollis, there was restricted cervical range of motion. Neck was rotated and tilt with tightness and USD findings were concomitant. Sequel of HIE was uh, there because there was significant birth history and MRI findings were suggestive of that. So to talk more about torticollis, like there are three uh, types of torticollis. It is congenital, acquired and spasmodic torticollis. Congenital is of three types, postural, muscular and sternocleidomastoid, mass which is also called as pseudo tumor. Acquired can, can be a traumatic inflammation to adjacent structures, tumoral, ocular and skeletal anomalies. And spasmodic, uh, which we most commonly know, is cervical dystomy. So, what type of torticollis was present in our case? There was no history of instrumentation used during delivery. Good NICU care with baby friendly handling with proper positioning. No history of trauma given by mother. No visible or palpable neck mass. No lymphadenopathy. No uh, neck USD finding suggestive of muscular component. So, most probable type of torticollis was congenital muscular torticollis. So, congenital muscular torticollis is uh, graded on the severity classification system. Uh, in this, uh, we see when the child is referred to us, what is the age of the referral? We start in this segment. 
so child was uh, child presented to our opd at the age of 6 months so we have three options then grade 1 2 and 3 we have 0 to 6 months then we look at what is the what are the passive rotation uh, range of motion limitation cervical passive range of motion limitation so in our case it was 50 degree uh, limitation so there are three uh, gradings one is less than 15 other is 15 to 30 third is more than 30 so most uh, our case was grade 3 because uh, infant presented to us at 6 months and there was uh, limitation of range of motion more than 30 so our provisional diagnosis was early severe congenital muscular torticollis grade 3 with cortical visual impairment and developmental delay secondary to hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle this is the most uh, commonly involved muscle in torticollis this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle and this function is uh, ipsilateral tilting and contralateral rotation. This is the levator scapula originating from the transverse process of C1 to C4 and it inserts onto the superior medial angle of scapula. So before starting any treatment, we should have some treatment goals. In our case, they were parents' education and counselling. It was very important as parents were hopeless and were not supportive in the beginning. So uh, we had to uh, go through various rounds of counselling. Then correction of torticollis and improved neck mobility. Maintain the torticollis correction. Then to help attain future age appropriate developmental milestones and prevent deformity associated with HIE C. So torticollis needed urgent attention because it was hampering with the milestone achievement of the baby. Treatment options, we have various treatment options, physical and occupational therapy, home modification for audiovisual stimulation, soft tissue mobilization, Customized torticollis brace, cranial remodeling orthosis, musculoskeletal intervention with botulinum toxin and surgery. For surgery, there is enough evidence present that it is indicated after the age of one year. So that was not an option for us at this stage. So physical and occupational therapy, it has good to excellent outcomes with early conservative physical therapy. As infants get older, the treatment duration increases. Infants referred to physical therapy before one month of age typically have shortest treatment duration that is less than one and a half month. For infant one to three month of age, treatment duration almost quadruples to six months. Infant who start treatment after six months of age may require as many as 10 months of physical therapy. Other activities, milestone augmentation activities, joint mobilization, prone line, trunk stimulation followed by turning and oral stimulation. This is sensory and motor function improvement by ball pool therapy. This is stretching of the affected uh, sternocleidomastoid side bending and rotation. This is a uh, neck stimulation. We can see baby is achieving partial neck control. Swiss ball controlled activities. In this picture we can see baby has started achieving partial neck control. So this is the positioning for play. We can see on the left side the baby is lying in the left uh, later decubitus position. So in this we have to ensure that the affected side should be on, on the upper level because with gravity it uh, it gives a passive stretch to the affective side so it's a, a passive stretching playing on the stomach the baby should be uh, <coughs> baby should uh, spend more time in prone position this is how uh, to carry the child in prone position uh, most importantly the breastfeeding how to breastfeed such uh, babies we have to keep the affected side up while breastfeeding and we have to feed the baby from both breasts in position. The affected side should be up so that it does not deteriorate. So home modification for audiovisual stimulation. Colorful objects, pictures as well as sound producing toys are placed on the non-affected side of the child that would create a passive pull on the tight muscles. Prone position to enhance neck control by placing favorite toy in front. Initially, we start with hanging toys in the midline so that we can achieve the neck rotation till the midline. Then shift the toys hanging from midline to non-affected side. Most importantly, mother should talk frequently and maintain eye contact with the baby. Third is soft tissue mobilization around sternocleidomastoid and levator scapula. Next, torticollis brace. Uh, there are two types of brace, static and dynamic. So and on to the left side we can see customized tort collar and to the right side is ready made prefabricated torticollis brace. So this tort collar is made out of soft tubing that goes, uh, that goes around the 
child's neck. This is the soft tubing. And we can see there are two vertical nylon tubes placed, positioned on the torticollis side that discourage the child from tilting his head to the affected side. These uh, static brace, they act on the bending component of the torticollis. They do not act on the rotational component. So at early stages, we can use them. But at the later stages of life, we have to uh, shift to dynamic brace. We can see there is a dynamic turn buckle mechanism along uh, which acts on the rotational component as well as bending component. Cranial remodeling orthosis, it is used for plagiocephaly. It exerts concentric pressure over the skull to promote symmetrical growth and reduce the plagiocephaly. Musculoskeletal intervention with botulinum toxin. To talk more about botulinum toxin, I would call Dr. Dutora, second year junior resident from Department of Pharmacology. Thank you, Dr. Pawan. Good morning, everyone. I shall be discussing the basic pharmacology of this wonder drug. Now, all of us are aware of this drug, botulinum toxin, popularly known as Botox, which is uh, used by celebrities to remove wrinkles and maintain their youthfulness. As paradoxical as the name sounds, even though it's a toxin, it finds diverse therapeutic applications. Let us dive deep into the application in the context of our case. It's a neurotoxin obtained from Clostridium botulinum divided into eight types from A to G. Three formulations have been approved world, worldwide. Ona, which comes under the popular brand name Botox, Ebo, which is for Disport, and Inco, which is for Xiaomi. Now, what is our aim in this particular case for giving botulinum toxin? To reduce the muscle tightness of the child, isn't it? So, where should we act? We should act at impulse transmission. We, we have to block the impulse transmission from now to muscle, which is the neurotransmitter involved. It is acetylcholine. And what is the site primarily involved? It is neuromuscular junction. Let us go back to the dynamics of neuromuscular junction. Now, if you see over here, it's a nerve ending. This one is a muscle end plate. It contain, the nerve ending contains uh, rounded bodies, vesicles, which have acetylcholine. And as soon as impulse transmits over here, the vesicles, <laughs> exocytosis of acetylcholine occurs from these vesicles with the help of snare proteins, which are soluble and ethyl melamide sensitive activating receptor proteins. So as soon as impulse arrives, acetylcholine gets released into the uh, muscles and the impulse transmission occurs. So our aim is to block this particular process, which is where botulinum toxin comes into picture. Over here you can see botulinum toxin binding to the membrane, getting a uh, membrane of the nerve. Beneath it is the muscle. The toxin getting internalized by the vesicle. It inactivates the snare proteins. SNAP25, which is a component of snail, uh, it uh, gets inhibited. So, uh, the release of acetylcholine is blocked. Impulse transmission is blocked, which ultimately induces a second type of flaccid paralysis, which is the need. Before therapy, if you see in this space, uh, acetylcholine is very high. So, there is still tightness. But after therapy of botulinum toxin, you can see very less acetylcholine is released and our aim is achieved. Some aspects of drug administration. A volume of, to be injected has to be kept between 0.2 to 1 ml. Recommended total dose for pediatric usage is uh, 6.5 units per kg for infants, 250 to 500 units for adults. Time of onset of effect is usually 4 to 7 days. Maximum effect you observe within 4 weeks. And repeat treatment after every 12 weeks if required as per the therapeutic response. Some adverse drug reactions also have are dry mouth, nausea, muscle weakness, myalgia and headache. So this wonderful drug, it acts on neuromuscular junction, inhibits, neuromus inhibits uh, transmission, has diverse applications and some adverse effects to rare. Now I would like to call Dr. Pawan for further discussion. Thank you, Dr. Du. So, injection botulinum toxin was given after carefully examining and confirming the involved muscles. 
two muscles in which it was given was right levator scapula and left in uh, sternocleidomastoid. 10 international units, uh, 0.5 ml at two different sites in the muscle belly was given. This is procedural photograph in minor OT of our department. The patient is very poor and not able to afford bottle and toxin. I am very thankful for the management who helped in providing this uh, bottle and toxin. So ultrasound uh, neck was done after 15 days of bottle and toxin injection at the Department of Radiology and it showed significant clinical improvement. The USG finding depicted the improvement in uh, thickness of left sternocleidomastoid <coughs> muscle. There was AP diameter difference in the right and left sternocleidomastoid was not that significant. Thank you for radiology department for carrying out a beautiful <coughs> investigation. Uh, at the day of intervention, child was of 6 months of age. We can see the neck uh, rotation deformity. 30 days post intervention at 7 months of age, we were able to achieve this correction. Comparative developmental scores, uh, pre-intervention at the age of 6 months, HINE score was 29, which improved to 42 one month post intervention and GMFM score was 5.7 pre intervention and one month post intervention it improved from 5.7 to 14.2 which uh, signifies significant improvement. Head circumference, so uh, at, uh, generally head circumference is uh, after 6 months of age uh, there is increase uh, of 0.5 cm per month till the age of 1 year. In our case, at the age of 6 months, head circumference was 37 and at, after 1 month post procedure, it was 38.5. There was increase of 1.5 cm which signifies, signifies, uh, which, uh, signifies a great improvement in the head circumference. This is the video of the baby. You can see the eye gaze which was more towards the right has now shifted more towards the center. So there are eyeball movements have significantly improved. So to, to discuss it further, I would like to call Dr. Man Singh sir, Assistant Professor from Department of PMR. Thank you Dr. Pawan. Good morning. Uh, I am here to discuss how torticollis affect development of the baby and what is the treatment option in future. So as per the given study which shows nearly 20% of children with congenital torticollis were at risk for developmental issue coordination, coordination problem and delay gross motor skills at future age. And it has been seen in this study that newborn who spend more time awake in the prone position acquire gross motor ability earlier than the infant who spend little time in this position. So but infant with congenital torticollis spend less time in the prone position. So probably infant with torticollis, a vicious loop of not maintaining the midline in the prone position uh, reduce the tummy time which cause developmental delay. So that may be the cause for the development delay or not achieving the neck holding at this age and in this case. So this study shows that uh, MRI and HINE score as explained previously are most predictive tool for detecting risk for cerebral palsy at this age and now uh, come to the how PMR can help in future if this child grows up. So first start with the education and counselling. So parent counselling is very important as crucial aspect before the initiation of rehabilitation and explain the caregiver that uh, rehabilitation is not a magic pill and it takes time to give good result which needs good family support, time, patience and trust on your healthcare provider. Along with that we can give medicines like muscle relaxant, supportive medicine for symptomatic treatment and go with the interventions like ultrasound guided botulinum toxin and spastic muscle neck, uh, nerve block or neurolysis via the phenol, absolute alcohol, radio frequency ablation and cryoablation. Third is if both method is not work well, then we go with the surgery like muscle lengthening, tenotomy, capsulotomy. We can use the brace also, brace sprint and cast which provides support to the limb, improve alignment, control motion, limit or reduce the pain, correct deformity, prevent the progression of deformity. And we can give as you know, we can give the exercise for this patient like range of motion, strengthening, stretching, we can give uh, training and therapy also which may be intense motor learning task specific approach, speech therapy 
sports and recreational activities like dancing, drawing, art and craft, etc. Now, aqua therapy is also there, which, which also known as aquatic therapy, is a sequence of water-based exercise that helps improve a person's physical ability and function. It develops more muscle control, increase self-confidence, improve strength and physical function, improve sensory integration, and improve sense of independence. This is a hippotherapy which utilizes the natural gait and movement of the horse to provide motor and sensory input. It is based on improvement of neurologic function and sensory process and used for patients with physical and mental disorder. It may improve posture, muscle tone, gait pattern, flexibility, strength, balance and coordination. And this image is a simulation hippotherapy simulator which used at a clinic setup. And uh, recent advance is the robotic biofeedback and image shows that the treadmill with robotic lower limb <coughs> along with the harness to reduce the load over the knee. So robotic rehabilitation therapy can deliver high dose and high intensity training make it useful for patients with motor disorder. This property makes robotic therapy a promising novel technology for rehabilitation of patients with motor disorders. Now virtual reality rehabilitation therapy is recently popular assistive technology in the rehabilitation of children with neurological issues. It characterizes that people can immerse themselves in a non-physical world through 3D display and active video games is used and facilitate the systematic practice of functional movement and multi-sensory feedback. So what is the benefits of early intervention? So early intervention enable timely timely early intervention when the greatest gain are possible from the neuroplasticity it improves patient parents and caregivers behavior it prevent contracture improve hygiene enhance the development of milestone inhibition of primitive reflex improve activity of daily living to make child independent and increase the mobility of child so now i invite dr swanu sir for the uh, for the take home message thank you dr man my take home message is early intervention is ideal for infants with development delay, delay because it takes advantage of the extremely adaptive feature of the developing brain. Although early intervention uh, will not cure the development delay, it can significantly improve motor function and prevent or delay the development of secondary complications. Uh, and also I want to specially thanks to Department of Pharmacology, Department of Pediatrics, Ophthalmology and Radiology for their kind help. Thank you. Thank you.